coming out. Uh, for those of you who I have not met, my name is Scott Lightman, and I'm the uh, Communications Director for USA Swimming. We want to welcome everybody out here to Irvine this week for our, uh, for our fifth Philip 66 Nationals. Uh, again, you see the hashtag up there as you're writing your stories this week. If you uh, have room in your 140 characters to include the hashtag in there, that'd be great as we collect all of the uh, conversation about this week. Your stories will hopefully be seen by more people, so thank you for that in advance. Uh, a great day of press conferences here. We're going to start off with Katie Ledecky, uh, world record holder from uh, the Washington, D.C. area, and her coach is Bruce Gemmel from Nation's Capital Aquatic Club. So Katie's going to give an opening statement, then we'll have some Q&As. Uh, we have some wireless mics, so if you could just raise your hand, uh, we're live on the webcast so we can capture your question, uh, identify yourself as well. So uh, without further ado, I'll turn it over to Katie. All right. Thanks, Scott. Uh, and thanks to all of you for being here and for your coverage. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this week and um, excited for some fast swimming and to see all my national team teammates and see how fast they can go to it. It's uh, an exciting week and uh, this meet is uh, a really crucial meet for a lot of people so uh, it's going to be an exciting week. Take any questions. Nick. Thanks for taking time guys. This is uh, Nick Sicardi from NBC Sports. Katie, I want to ask you, uh, when was the first time you heard about a swimmer named Missy Franklin and what were your impressions of her? Um, probably when I was 13-ish, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, right when she was um, on the scene at Worlds, um, swimming fast, and um, so I watched her swim when she swam at Worlds when I was a little younger, and watching all these, um, these swimmers compete online, and um, she was swimming really fast, and I enjoyed getting to know her over the past two years on uh, the Olympic team and the world's team and uh, it's always great to be on a team with her. She has really great positive energy and is fun to be on a team with. Katie, I think a lot of people lump the 800 and 1500 together and think, well, if you're a distance swimmer, you can swim both and be good at both. Can you describe what the differences are? In some ways, it seems like the two might have as much to do with each other as the 400 and the 100, or, you know, what is your, how do you look at it? Uh, I guess I look at them pretty similarly. Uh, sometimes I even go a best time in the 800 off the mile split, so... Uh, I think I, I think I approach them fairly similarly. Um, I treat them as races, and I know what paces I need to hit for the 800 and the mile. And um, I guess those two are more similar than the 400 and the 800. Um, everything under the 800 is a sprint for me. Well, it doesn't happen <laughs> anymore, but uh, I know my mile in June, I think I went my third or fourth best time in the 800, so I don't think you'll be seeing that anymore. Um, but uh, it's just, once I get into a rhythm, it's uh, pretty hard for me to stop holding that rhythm. Nicole, Iraq, USA Today. Um, Katie, I know you're entered in a lot of different distances here, um, but generally speaking, I mean, what, what appeals to you about these longer distances? Not all swimmers do them and are obviously not as dominant doing them either, but what do you like about the 800 and the 1500? Uh, I think I like the training for it the most. Um, I just like the feeling of a hard practice, um, and Bruce gives them to us, and uh, I've been training for everything, though. Um, I think I see myself more as a freestyler than a distance swimmer. Um, so I focus on the freestyles mainly. Uh, the 200 meter freestyle, I think a lot of people are anticipating watching you in because it's actually a distance where people are close to you in races, especially with the Americans, Missy and Allison. What intrigues you the most about that event and having that kind of domestic competition in it? Uh, I think it's really exciting and I think the best part about it is hopefully we'll all be on a relay together at some point, uh, whether that's this year or next year or sometime in the future. And I think the more that we push each other, the faster we're going to go and 
the faster our relay is going to be. So that's the most exciting thing, I think, uh, in my view. Bruce, from a coach's perspective, what's it like to see her in a 200 in, in a race where it's, you know, it's not a foregone conclusion in, in a lot of cases? Well, certainly the thing that intrigued Katie in particular and myself about the 200 was the relay and the relay possibilities with it. Um, obviously, if you want to swim on a, a women's 800 free relay for the U.S., you need to be pretty good at the 200. And in order to get good enough to be on the relay, all of a sudden we're, you know, pretty competitive in it individually also. So, I mean, the, the relay is what's, what's driving it. And, um, you know, she's gotten pretty good at it. Hi, Katie. Uh, Dan Albano. I'm with the Orange County Register. Um, following up with your uh, talked about uh, training, how, um, how many meters uh, do you swim a day? Um, how many days a week? Can you um, talk about your, what your training regimen is like? Uh, well, Bruce could probably answer that better than I could, but uh, it's probably about seven to 9,000 for practice, and then about eight times a week or nine times a week. Uh, I guess in the summer it's a little more. I think in the summer I swim nine times a week. Um, and then I do dry land on top of that too, two to three times a week. So you're going um, two, twice a day uh, training sessions? Uh, a couple days a week, yes. Okay. Katie Philip Persh of the Chicago Tribune. Um, I presume that your plan would be to defer your entry to Stanford one year and, and uh, take that year and train for the Olympics, or is that not your plan? Uh, that's something I'm certainly thinking about, and I'll be making that decision uh, in the next couple of months. Sprinters take relays for granted. As a, someone who swims events that are usually tacked on to the end and seems like kind of a lonely existence for the distance swimmer, is that part of the allure for you, is to just really feel more of that team atmosphere and being part of a relay um, where you're not so alone? Uh, I guess so. It's exciting to be a part of Team USA. It's just a really great team, so many great swimmers, so it, it truly is an honor to be on a relay, and um, that's something that I have been shooting for. I was on it last year and really enjoyed it there, so uh, hopefully I'll have a few more of those in the future. What uh, I think just being in an event with three other people, um, and being in the ready room with them, and it's a pretty relaxing uh, environment, and we're all working towards a same, this, the same goal, and uh, we want to do our best to represent the country, and you do it all together, so it's, uh, it's fun when four people can do it um, all together. Um, you're entered in the individual medleys here. How serious of an event is that for you, and could you compete that at major international meets at some point? Uh, I don't think I'll be swimming it internationally anytime in the future, and we'll see if I swim them here. Um, so that's sort of to be determined, but um, it's better to over-enter here than, uh, than under-enter. Um, I know I question, sorry. Uh, going back to, to Missy, Last year at the World Championships was really interesting because you broke your world records, won your four gold medals, and she also set the record for most golds by a woman in a single worlds. Uh, and you were named the swimmer of the meet. Uh, I think you also won World Swimmer of the Year. And I, th I think I remember the press conference, you said, this award deserves to go to Missy. Um, what kind of, I guess, emotions did you kind of have watching her at that meet and kind of the back and forth between you guys almost kind of, you know. Yeah, I don't think it was, it was any back and forth or anything like that. We just both wanted to do our best, and uh, I guess that award could have gone to both of us, or either of us. So um, it was really exciting to, to be on the team with her, and um, we were, everybody on the team was just trying to do their best, and Misty did phenomenally, and uh, I had a, probably my best meet of my life. So uh, it was a really exciting meet. I hope to be on more international trips and more international trips with Missy. Katie, is, is this week a, a shave and taper meet for you that you're, um, you know, really geared a lot of training toward this meet to, to go potentially? Yeah, it's, it's an important meet, um, this meet and uh, PAMPACs. Hopefully I'll qualify for PAMPACs, and uh, these two meets are, are really big for qualifying for Worlds next year, so 
um, there is a good amount of focus on this meet, and I've just been doing whatever he's been telling me to do in practice, um, and hopefully uh, it'll mean uh, good swimming this week. Uh, John Howe from NBC. Um, Katie, the two world records in Texas, that was coming off an altitude training camp, that's right? Yes. Um, is that the first time you had done, uh, come, uh, gone to a meet after an altitude training camp? Yes, it was. Uh, that was my first extended period of time at altitude. I was there for 18 days, and then we went to Texas and swam the meet there. So it was my first time. I didn't know exactly what to expect or what times to expect, so uh, it, was, it was fun to, to swim fast and feel good there. Bruce, considering her success there, is that something you're considering in the future? More altitude camps, a regular occurrence once a season? Um, before we left camp, I had already booked time for next year. So it was booked whether she was successful or not, I guess. But that was sort of the plans. And that was a, you know, the first, as she said, is the first time she was there. Everybody reacts differently. Um, obviously, we got a, a favorable reaction. But we'd already booked the time before the results. So it a, wasn't a big change of plans or anything. When you, were, when you were leaving the camp, did you expect special things coming out of uh, the camp from her? I, I know people re can react differently, but did you see something that said that maybe she would react well? You know, I had, I had a ballpark where I thought she would swim, and, and sometimes I lose perspective myself on just how fast that time might be or where it is in relation to everybody else. Um, as she said before, I think we both expected her, in the mile in particular, 1540 or just under. Um, so there wasn't a, a huge surprise, but I think we sort of forget that that's a pretty good swim sometimes. Bruce, you are a distance swimmer. You've coached a number of distance swimmers. When you hear Katie say, once I get into a rhythm, it's pretty hard for me to stop, how much can you relate to that? How rare is that ability to have that metronomic? Um, I think you used the right word there. It's almost a metronome that gets going. And having swum, I can relate to it a little bit. Uh, more so, I can listen to the swims and really understand whether it's being swum well or not. Maybe that's just spending too much time on lonely pool decks, but you can hear the rhythm, the cadence, the, the metronome, um, and you know what to expect out of the individual swimmers as far as that goes. Just the stroke rate and the noise of the kick or the water entry, whatever it is, it's, um, I know Katie has said from when she's swimming it, she feels that way. And I said, I can, I can listen to it and, you know, you know, sort of how the yeah. swim is going. Sometimes during practice, he says, that doesn't sound like fast swimming or that sounds like fast swimming. So. Yeah, it, it doesn't sound right sometimes. I'm yeah. sorry. That's <laughs> a, a concert pianist can, you know, obviously hear it on the piano and I, you know, we hear it on the pool deck. Hey, Coach, uh, can you describe, um, you know, uh, if Katie has, like, a consistent strategy on these distance events, like in the 800 and the, and the mile, in terms of how she uh, takes it out? Does she pretty much go hard from the very beginning, um, or does she, is she, like, a back halfer that you hear a lot with distance, uh, you know, does, you know um, swimming? But does she have a consistent strategy in how she tries to swim these races? Um, I think... One of Katie's biggest growth areas over the last two years is that she can swim multiple, she can swim the races multiple ways. Um, I think maybe up until a couple of years ago, she was most comfortable and had only swum it going out real hard from the start. But based upon her swims last summer in Barcelona, that for various reasons we chose to swim different ways, and the swims down in Texas, I think that's her biggest growth area that she can now swim back half, front half, middle half every other lap or however we choose to swim it. <laughs> We've what, done that before. What kind of strategies, uh, what kind of factors change those, uh, the way you swim, what way she swims those races? What kind of things are sometimes factored in? You know, probably the two biggest things would be obviously the competitive field and then where the race falls in the overall program schedule. You're going to swim differently on the first day of a seven or eight day meet than you might on the last day. I guess I'll go for one more if I could. Um, then how do, can you talk about anything that might be factors this week uh, where Katie, Katie's pretty, you know, her seat times are quite a bit of, uh, ahead of uh, in the distance events than the competition? Yeah, I think the most important thing to remember for this week is that, you know, this week is one of two weeks of racing over the next three weeks, and we almost have to view it as a three-week meet. Not quite, but 
it's almost a three-week meet, and we need to, to manage that accordingly. That'll dictate as much as anything. Bruce, um, you know, you were saying a little bit earlier, hinting at that, you know, you get so used to seeing certain times or certain swims that you forget sometimes, oh, that was a really good race. Does, you know, it happen in Texas or any time Katie swims, did it ever surprise you anymore or the growth that she has made in her, in her swimming over the last year or two? Um, you know, it, it's always relatively incremental, so it's sort of in some ways like watching your kids grow up. You don't, you know, realize that they're six feet tall. They don't go from four feet to six feet. And, you know, Katie's sort of done, done the same thing. I mean, every time we've gotten a little bit better in, in different areas. So literally with in a pool full of practice swimmers or in a noisy arena for a meet, you can literally hear the sounds of what her stroke is like? Yeah. How do you, I mean, how do you hear that amidst all the other racket in the background? That's not racket. Um, I, I, you know, obviously the fewer swimmers that are in the water, the easier it is to, to pick out. Um, you know, if we have a practice of 40 swimmers going, I may not be able to do it, but when we're in small numbers or in a, in a, in a race setting, you can pick it out pretty easily. I mean, it's something we listen to for 20 hours a week, so you get, get used to it. Uh, Katie, picking Stanford, um, did you talk to Janet Evans at all before that or since picking Stanford? Have you heard from Janet at all? Uh, no, not really. I actually met her for the first time at Golden Goggles um, in November, so uh, it was really nice to meet her. Uh, and at that point, the college process was just sort of ramping up, so I never had much conversation with her about, uh, about that. But um, I know that there's a great history there, and um, I'm really excited about my decision, and I'm looking forward to, to swimming for Stanford and, uh, and competing at the NCAA level there. What was the conversation like between you and Janet at Golden Goggles? Uh, well, I was actually at the um, Swimming Through the Decades event, uh, where Janet, uh, Lenny Kreiselberg, Matt Biondi, and Tracy Calkins were there, and Rowdy was moderating, so uh, it was really neat to hear them talk and tell their stories of their Olympic experiences and uh, sort of share those uh, moments with, with each other. Were you the only active swimmer there? Uh, yes, I was. Any other questions for Katie? All right, Katie's on the docket tomorrow for the 100 and 800 parade. And we'll Thank you. Probably see you in the big zone after. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks.